What's going on? Brian Maxwell here. Um, as of recently, I've been doing a whole lot of traveling. Uh, I'm actually in Illinois right now working with uh, one of my dealer clients out here in lovely Heron, Illinois. Um, just recently had the pleasure of being in Colorado Springs and back in my second home, which is Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and was spent some time down in New Orleans. And regardless of where I am across the country, you know, you, you quickly realize a trend that there are a lot of people, good people, intelligent people that are unemployed right now. They are anxiously seeking an opportunity to improve their financial situation and to do something that they can actually feel good about. People say, I want to be able to wake up every day and be happy that I'm doing it. And that's possible. But even when you're doing what it is you love to do, you still run into those periods where it requires you know, more than any type of external gratification to kind of push you over the hump. It has to be a true love of what it is you do and a desire within yourself to kind of continue to raise the bar and evolve. But when it comes to finding or seeking employment, I ask people, well, what are you doing? And the most common thing I hear is, well, I went online, I applied online, submitted my resume. And folks, I'm here to tell you, whenever I place an ad on any of the job boards that I'm affiliated with, um, for one posting, I typically typically get anywhere between 500 to 1,000 people applying for it. Now, that's as far as a sales position, and in a lot of cases, at a dealership or at an insurance company or something like that. Imagine just your typical customer service position or uh, clerical opening. If sales, especially a niche sales such as automotive sales or insurance is getting 500 to 1,000, imagine what your more common positions are getting. They're probably getting anywhere between 2,000 and 3,000 people that are applying. And the one thing that you have to do in order to get that call back is you have to stand out. Now, I'll be I'll let you in on a little secret. When we run these ads, and I've talked to many different business owners and other people in charge of human resources and hiring, we run an ad, and we create an email address for all of these resumes to be able to flow through, right? And typically, once you get to about 50, 60, maybe 70, depending on how many people you're looking to hire, you kind of say, you know what, out of this batch, I should be able to find some qualified candidates. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you have to go back into the well. But if you're not already like on that post, that job listing within the first 24 hours, really within the first two hours, you could easily fall by the wayside. Because now, regardless of what job board you're on, as soon as a new posting comes up relevant to what you're looking for, email notifications and text notifications go out. So you got all these people simultaneously hearing about this one opening and everybody goes to try to apply from their phone. So how do you stand out from that? I'm going to let you in on some tips that I've shared with other people that I've gotten some amazing stories back from. First, what you do is you go online, you go to that job board, and you find that opportunity you're looking for. You want to go ahead and do what they ask you to do, which is apply online, submit your resume. Now, after that, immediately, if they provide you with the actual company name, because sometimes they don't, but when they do, you need to go to that company's website and get their telephone number. The next thing you do is you call into that organization and you ask the receptionist. Make sure you're very polite. Greet the receptionist. Ask him or her how they're doing, how their day is, and whatnot. Then you ask them, who's in charge of the hiring? Many times they'll roll off a name. Well, it's Sue Johnson or Mike Rogers. Okay, listen, I have a very important email I like to send to them. May I please have their email address or I need to forward over my resume for that particular position. May I have their email address, please, so I can send it over to them? And I'll, I'll, I can assure you nine out of ten times they're going to give you that email address So because you say, who's in charge of your human resources or who's in charge of your hiring or who makes the hiring decisions? You ask for their email address. Email is non-threatening. It's a lot different than asking for like a personal phone number or something like that. Once you get the email address, what you do is you send them a very personalized email. Make sure your spell check is on. And then the title, it should say their name, comma, Excellent candidate for and whatever the position is. Then your email. Your email has to be all about them, not about you, because your resume talks about you. So when your email is about, hey, listen, uh, saw the ad that you had posted, and I know you're looking for skilled people with specific qualifications to do X. I would be of value to your company because what I'd bring to you is um, – or blah, 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 and then just kind of briefly touch on some things, energy and whatnot. Or um, if you're looking for skilled individuals, um, I most definitely will be a valued asset for your 
for your team. I've included an attachment that has my uh, my qualifications and my experience on it. I wanted to get this directly over to you as quickly as I can because being affiliated with a company like yours is extremely important to me, and I want to make sure that I take advantage of this career opportunity that you are offering. I really appreciate your time reading this email. Hopefully, it finds you in good health, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Somewhere along those lines, something like what I just said will be very, very short, a small block, um, and you go ahead and put your name, put your contact, telephone number, a good email address, and if your email address is something like uh, Snazzy Daddy Jazz 01, please go create yourself a more uh, adult-like or professional email address. I see people applying with Snazzy Jazzy Super Duper 803. Who's going to remember that? Okay, Who's even going to take that seriously? And I... I'd love to tell you that email addresses don't get paid attention to. Everything that you present is being critiqued and analyzed prior to them making a buying de uh, a hiring decision. But make sure that in your email, it's all about them. It's all about what you bring to them. When people go to interviews, all they talk about is, well, I'm this and I'm hardworking and I'm and I'm and I'm. They can care less about what you feel you are or have been for other people. What are your skills and experience going to do for their business? Everyone has a selfish gene, and when you're interviewing or you're sending a resume over or an email over to somebody about a potential job, you've got to be feeding to their ego. Also, another very important tip, this shotgun approach of having this one resume for every different position doesn't work anymore. What you have to do is once you read the ad, the job description for a particular business, make sure that you reword your resume to include certain wording that they had in their ad posting that they're looking for, make sure you include that in your resume if you have those qualifications. So if they say they're looking for a talented, driven, uh, professional that's uh, dedicated with Microsoft skills, if you have those, make sure when you're describing yourself and your qualifications you put on and you take that exact phrase that they had, you can copy it and paste it right into your resume. Make sure that you edit the font to make it fit. But when a person is reading your resume, certain keywords that they had in their ad should jump out at them in your resume. It really is an attention grabber, okay? Um, this is just one of the many videos that I'm going to be putting out, really helping people be able to transform their careers, jumpstart their lives, and start earning some, some real money. It's time to be a big game hunter. Remember, closed mouths don't get fed. And if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you've been sitting around and you know you've been applying but haven't been getting the call back, it's time to think outside of the box. And I'll tell you, most employers love it when somebody is proactive and does things a little bit out the box and really takes an additional step to get themselves recognized. That shows that this is a serious candidate that has some, some thinking skills and is willing to do what it takes in order to make themselves successful. So, Take heed to what I'm saying. I know some of you will do it, but you, you, you might not. But uh, good luck to you. Listen, keep rocking on. Make sure you pay attention and look out for the next videos as I go more in detail about structuring the resume, the things that you say and do to really stand out in the resume all the way down to the colors that you wear, um, to the words that you use, all right? Hey, stay blessed. Keep the faith. Stay positive. I'm Brian Maxwell, the success coach for the Generation of Change, and I look forward to seeing you at the top.